Uh, the key element here, I think, is that is that COVID-19 is sweeping the world and making us all think again. Its impact, social and economic particularly, is going to be very uh, far-reaching and long-term. At the same time, China is at the heart of it because this is where the virus originated, uh, we think, uh, and uh, the uh, and China's expansion uh, around the world and as it has been for some time now. I mean, I, I think this is a particularly fascinating topic because we've got some fantastic experts who really know inside out what China's been doing over the past 10 or 20 years and where it's going. And with COVID-19, you're going to have a long-term international social and economic impact. And at the heart of that is China, because China is the expanding power. And every country, every government is working out how to deal with it. But it is also the place where the uh, where the virus originated. So you have the politics and the science there. You have the essence of this is democrat democratic and open societies against closed authoritarian ones. And also, very worryingly, in, in the past uh, couple of weeks, there uh, is these indications that China is taking advantage of the world's concentration on the pandemic to even expand itself uh, more. Their South China Sea uh, tension uh, is growing and a lot of talk in the Chinese media about Taiwan. The, the experts that we've got, I, I will be chairing it. And what we're going to be looking at is the the way the Chinese government itself operates. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to go very deeply into that. We're going to look at the, the, the world order as it is, because there's been a lot of talk about a new world order, whether it will be reform of the current world order that was basically set up after the Second World War, but led by Western democracies, or whether there can be two parallel orders, ways of doing things, one led by China, the other the existing world order as it is. But I think one thing that we all know, and that's coming out of the pandemic, uh, here in Europe where we are and in other places, is that the institutions that we are looking to, to guide us through this, all of us, us and our families, are creaking at the seams, badly in need of reform and of new ideas. If you look at the United Nations, it has been pretty much in paralysis over COVID-19, not much is coming through that. If you look at Europe, where we are here now, uh, there were many of the smaller countries here were expecting and hoping that the European Union would take a strategic, uh, long view, cohesive policies on it. It hasn't happened. Each country has gone in onto its own. They've put up borders in places. They've <clears throat> hoarded supplies. They've done their own thing. Are we back to the nation state? And then you're looking at the regional and global alliances that are set up by things like the United Nations, the European Union, and, 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 how they, and how they have been affecting on this. And where does China fit into all of this? Well, China doesn't really work with alliances, not like us. China works with China. China has its mandate of heaven. So people either buy into what it's doing or do not buy into what it's doing. What will happen with the supply chains that come out of China, the clothes that we're wearing, the, uh, the, all of this stuff that we have? What's going to happen when nations start thinking, well, we need to control our supply chains more? That will have a huge impact on, on us, but a huge impact also on China, uh, because China has become rich uh, by selling its goods and its supply chains to us in the West, mainly. So these are huge, far-reaching things that come out of this single, uh, single, rather devastating pandemic that we're still, we are going to be discussing this when we're still in the middle of it. Sure. Uh, and quite possibly, we're going to be discussing at the very time that China is saying, well, we've conquered it. We've, our people are now free to move around. We have no more lockdown. But we did it with mechanisms of surveillance and discipline that are unpalatable to your Western democracies. We saved lives that you couldn't save because of our strictures. Now, how does that mesh? A strong argument, perhaps. But how does that actually mesh when there are one million people in their 
labor camps, concentration camps, whatever you want to call them, in, in Muslim-dominated, predominated Xinjiang. How do we, with our Western democracies, got our heads around this? A new power that brought people out of poverty more than most of the, its democratic rivals in the developing world, but also a new power that has shown in the past six months that it's better at cracking down a, on a pandemic uh, than we have been in Italy, France, Britain, and America. These are all the questions that we're going to be looking at, the long-term impact, social and economic, of COVID-19 with China at the center and a panel of experts brought together by Democracy Forum. Thank you. Thank you.